It looks like the next game has started. Playing 2200 National Master. And we got E4. So let's start a bush. Let's try and play Bush Gas Gambit. New laptop since a few days ago, actually. Oop, we have an acceptance of the Bush Gas Gambit early on. Often there's Bishop C4 giving them another chance to accept it. But here, so this is very fun. It's very Stafford esque. Okay, not giving us the Stafford capture, but it's like a reverse Urasov now. Reverse Urasov Gambit. So now knight c3 is main, queen h5. So the point, there's a key tactical point here is d4 is not possible. Because knight takes d4, knight takes, and then there's queen takes d1. And then I just get my pawn back at the end of that. So Stockfish hates this. I think it's like nearly plus two. <laughs> but I think the more it thinks, Leela doesn't dislike it too much. I think it's like plus 0. 0.4 on Leela. But anyway, I mean, it's very simple for black to play. Because like we castle here. And then both works come to the center. In fact, I think I have a video specifically on this. Okay, knight e4. So knight e4. My queen is defending that. Uh, the question is, do I want to back it up? I'm probably just going to castle. Play knight g3. So that's the thing. What's the point in knight e4? Is it to play knight g3 or is it to take... Okay, h3. So h3 doesn't make a threat because I can take the rook. But knight g3 would make a threat. That's the problem. It attacks the queen and defends the rook. So maybe last turn I should have played knight f6 to get rid of that. Now it's forcing me to do something with the bishop. It's my concern, and I do not want to be forced to do something with the bishop. So, okay. What if I just went completely crazy? Is that possible? I'm gonna allow an HG3. I don't know. We're here to have fun, aren't we? I'm gonna literally allow an HG3. So, okay. Queen G6. You can take my bishop. And my point is that I'm attacking F2. And I want to see how you're going to defend it. I've really gone nuts. I think I need the gambit glasses whipped out again here. Need the gambit glasses because we've really gambited a lot here. They give me a whole new, a whole new vision of the board. <laughs> the point is, so d4 is one option, but I just kind of take it and then rook takes. And the rook takes will even kind of defend my knight that's hanging then. So castles was the other point. But now I have the h file to attack with. And my other idea, which was taking this. Yes? Queen h6 is still appealing to me. Okay, knight takes f2. The gambit glasses are out. Here we go. So, that rook is hanging. I see a whole new board like this. I see things my opponent doesn't see. <laughs> Only for gambits, though. Okay, he's trying to he's trying to defend that rook. What's material if I just take that rook? Uh, okay, we can try bring. Okay, I have so many ideas here. This is crazy. Okay, I can try bringing like another thing in. I could try bring this around. I could play an eighty four. I need to pick something. I like knight d4. I think that's the most confusing move. Yes. Because it's like, okay, I broke up my pin. But first of all, that rook can't move. And my point is, yeah, it takes. I want to go rook takes. Again, my pin's blocked. But my next idea is rook h4 and checkmate. Because I got rid of that knight, which was a very key defender. It was defending checkmate. So my rook switch 
gonna come a lot across. I think my opponent found a really good, clever resource with Knight here and Knight g3 to allow them to play h3, defending their rook. But little did they know, they thought they'd be like, oh yeah, that bishop has to move, totally, it's attacked. But I'm like, no, I'm just gonna sacrifice it. Because I've got the glasses. <laughs> okay, wait, this is now like checkmate. A rook move is like a check. This is, this is, this should just be winning. Oh, wait, check. How do you not lose your queen here? I have like no time. I need to be faster. But how do you not lose your queen? Well, you have d4. I didn't see that. Oh, wait, but I covered it anyway. I covered it anyway. So the bishop can't come out to block. Yeah, we're winning the queen here at minimum. I probably had better. Bishop e3, I just take it, and then we're, we're going to win the queen, because otherwise, yeah, if you go to the h-file, you just get mated. Oh, in fact, you're getting mated anyway. Gambit glasses, baby. We got them. We got them. Mmm. Checkmate in 20 moves. That was probably a terrible idea, to just give that bishop against the National Master. I literally just let that bishop hang. But that that was a fun game. That was a fun one. Thank you very much. Alright, we'll put these to the side until next time. But that was good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, so they accepted my bush gas gambit. Stockfish, I think, is all, already thinks I'm losing. But Stockfish is, you know... Just a hater in general. So knight f3 is actually a very good idea. Because the Stafford capture with d takes c6, um, I think, is very strong in terms of getting these pieces out. But knight f3, so d5 is what we play. Takes, queen takes. I think Stockfish's favorite idea, yeah, is c3 and d4. But, c, but like, I don't know, knight c3 is just such a natural move and it's not even a mistake. But c3... It's a hard move to play since it doesn't do anything, but d4 is going to create a solid pawn chain. We still have fun around it. I mean, I, I, I don't think it really changes much, because here, bishop comes back to d6, and we make threats on h2 later on. And anyway, let's get to the game, so queen h5. So my opponent here doesn't want to play d4, because as I mentioned, there's this trick where I can take d1, and, okay, this end game is just equal. So bishop e2, bishop g4, so now my opponent surprises me with this new move, knight e4. Instead of just castling and allowing my my usual attacking shenanigans, which I'm ready for. The point here, so the queen and bishop align pretty well in this diagonal. Because there's no h3, because you can't take my bishop because that rook falls. And if you castle, you know, if you castle, okay, you invite bishop takes h3 tactics. Um, so here knight e4 was played, and I just castled. And so h3, knight f6. Oh, was my sacrifice good? No way, my sacrifice was good. <laughs> Who would have known? I thought it was a terrible idea. I just didn't see why. Um, um, but yeah, okay, there's this hit on f2. So, okay, the point is with my queen hit, it doesn't even matter if I stay on this file. Because takes this, this rook is protected. Um, but my queen's under attack, so I move it. Let the bishop fall. Hits f2. So if you play d4, it's not helpful. Because I just take it. And I can go rook takes here. Oh, oh knight takes f2 even stronger. Knight takes f2. Nice move, because that knight's also soft now. And now, like, rook takes... This is killer. Because, like, anywhere the queen moves, there's, like, rook d1 gonna, like, take the queen, pretty much. Because this is just a strong discovered attack. But, I, I mean, I used ideas like this in the game. So, castles, he got an exclam for it, but... So, we sacrifice here. There's not really much of a sacrifice, because now we have a lot of pressure. What was my opponent supposed to do? It was saying equals a second ago, but maybe now it's realizing it's just lost. It's just lost. You can't take this bishop. It's just bad. This evaluation keeps going in my favor. Nate d4 was a great find. Wow, that was a good one. All credits to these boys. Because I was overwhelmed with options about bringing my rooks into the game, about pawns to push. But Nate d4 was key. Because that knight was the, like the last important defender. Not only was it a shield on the f-file, but it gave me ideas of rook h4, queen h2. And so every other move here is actually not very good. But in d4, we eliminate that guy. And so these still aren't playing is also the point. 
Um, rook f3 is actually the best move, but everything's just lost. So, for example, d3, this rook just swings over, and now queen h2 is coming. And so in the game, okay, check, and just... Uh, okay, it's all lost, and this was checkmate. Okay, if I upload that to YouTube, like and subscribe, I got another game starting right now. <laughs> Von Poppy all time. Ooh, not Von Poppy all time. Uh, we are facing a modern defense. Oh, what's this? Okay, maybe it's Von Popiel esque. <laughs> I mean, this is much more sound, but this is more in my style. Take my pawn, please. I like to gambit. That was fun. I'm still feeling good about that last one. That was a fun game. Uh, Alright, alright. I got bishop h6 on the table here. Oh, he wrote something. Guess you're better than me at blitz if you can beat me with that ish. <laughs> That's funny. I don't really love the insult to my opening, but... I guess it's a compliment to me. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. And castles. So now my queen can take here without having to worry about protecting. And that was a good set of pawns I wanted to trade off. So I do want to play h4, h5, although h4 looks pretty stupid now. So let's try and address this bishop. King over. All right, I think I'm just down a pawn, really. Mm, mm, So we got rid of this bishop, and so now h4, h5 is more on the table. Opening this h file, hopefully allowing queen h6 check at some point. That's the dream, anyway. So my opponent's going to have to defend against that a bit. Probably some ideas of shifting this rook along. I could take it if I really want h5 right now. But let's take here. I still want h5. Okay, queen takes. Ball take? Yeah, okay, queen takes. d5 checks on the table, so he's got to block it. Now let's get the queen somewhere else. So... Let's step... Where should we go with our queen? The thing is, h5, g5 is going to be annoying. But I have other ideas, so h5, g5 might just shut some things down. But I can also come across... Okay, let's come across. Now it'll be harder to just have a loose pawn hanging out on the g file. We should be ready to attack with our rooks here. Just trying to pry these files open. Okay, I can't go there. There's just f5. So let's go here. Looks alright. Yeah, but now h5 is still doable, actually. 
Still doable. These should be good. Um, okay, trade. I have been trying to pry that op file open for a minute now. Hmm. So now, knight takes, I mean, I have queen check. I feel like he could allow that, actually. But pawn takes seems more likely. Why doesn't he want to do it? Can I do this? Knight takes, then queen check. But pawn takes, he went there. Seems suspicious. I just don't know what to do. Okay. Mm. Don't want to trade queens. I want to attack. Maybe I should have and just taken some pawns in the end game. That actually would have been totally fine. But okay. I made my bed here. I'm going all out for this idea. I also can't blunder back rank, mate. Mm -mm. Knight takes hangs this pawn. So, what do we got here? He's thinking, okay, this pawn. No mate yet. He really wants to swap the queens. I think I really don't want to swap the queens. Don't want to trade anything. He's under a lot of pressure here. Uh, Alright, what if I just take a pawn? Here? I can do it. My bishop guards this. Okay, I just win, don't I? I just win. It's gonna be like mate. Boom! We got him. We got him. Alright. That was fun, I just kind of... Did I have rook h7 check when he was looking? We went to queen of six for a queen trade. Oh, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I had here. That's a good tactic. That's puzzle rush right there. That's puzzle rush check. And then here. You're totally right. My bishop card's mate. You're right. I was just like, yeah, let me just keep dodging queen trades. Because, so th the point is like, if your king is safer than your opponents, then you want the queens on the board. Because without queens, it's very hard to just, like, attack in general, you know? Like, king safety is very important with queens on the board, and much, much less important with queens off the board. And so my king was totally fine, other than, like, not hanging back rank mate. And I could have just played a3 at any moment. But my king had three pawns in front of it. But his, you know, I just sacked a pawn early. Uh, and and uh, I never even put these on. Never even put these on. Isn't that crazy? So it was g6, it was like going to be a modern, but then I'm like, okay, e4 and ac3 in whatever order. But then instead of playing bishop g7, he plays d5. So that, that was a little bit surprising. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I gambit this pawn, I got two question marks for it. But we made it into a von Popiel, kind of, because this could have been a von Popiel, yeah? Can't, can't I get that position? With like, I don't know, he played knight of 6 in the game anyway, so this was like... Well, this could have been like a black mardemer anyway, at least, with, with g6, right? Um, but so we got this, right? Okay, I mean, I'm much worse here. Just down a pawn. <laughs> but I got rid of that bishop. Just hanging out. And then my idea here, so we're castled on opposite sides, and so my idea is to attack. I'm going to pry open this h file. So here we go. In fact, I had something better. It wanted me to take for... Oh, no, it's, it's fine. Here, I mean, it already likes white's position. Because, yeah, black just doesn't have a lot of space. Black has no threats on my king. There's no pressure on me, so it's very easy to just play in blitz. And I got these files, and so I'm just going to push h5. And pry these things open. 
Squin d6. Rook over. Therefore, maybe that's something better. Should just push h5. But there, h5 there was g5, right? So he doesn't want to allow me to open files. Ah, but I already ran out of time here to analyze it. But okay, already this position is quite good. Very hard to defend. I missed rook h7 here, as you said. Right, we've got we've got another game. We've got another game versus a national master. The clocks will start in. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go into focus mode and let's try and play a von Popiel. our favorite gambit the von Popiel gambit <laughs> one of our favorite gambits the point is bishop to g5 here and now bishop to f5 is the most natural move it's not a black mardemer not quite a black mardemer because yes bishop to f5 now we play f3 and now with queen takes f3 instead of knight takes we have um, a hit here and a hit here, and it's very complex to deal with. So queen c8, this is one of the moves. I believe, do I take first or do I just play bishop out? Yeah, just bishop out is fine. Just continuing to develop. Now I can take it. And so now I have here g4, because e6 has actually blocked the queen's defense of the square. g4 would allow um, queen takes f6 next. So that looks pretty appealing. However, there's like this other move, d5. Okay, let's, let's play g4 though. Okay. Cover this in my video. I can play queen takes f6, or I can just strike. Or I can throw in rook c1. So there's a lot of fun stuff going on here. I think I think we're going to need the gambit glasses to focus. We're going to need these shades here to help out. I'm two pawns down, so I need both these lenses to help me out for these pawns. <laughs> Alright. I think we got here queen takes f6. Hitting this rook. And now I'm just going to eat this pawn. What are you going to do about it? If I just take it. Because now I got bishop takes coming. It's going to hit the queen. It's going to hit the rook. I am zoned in. I'm in gambit mode. I just see like a totally different board like this. First like this. You know? <laughs> I think like he had to do something about queen takes f6. But the thing is d5 was also such a big strike against like all of his stuff here. You know, he had like some few pawns there. Oh, oh no. I don't want to pre-move that. And now this is pretty tough. What else do you do if you can't play pawn takes? Like in this position, but like let's even say he played bishop e7 guarding this. All right, I can play queen e2, hitting the bishop. Bishop comes back, and then I take on e6. So bishop here, queen e2, comes back, takes, takes, bishop takes e6. I mean, it's just so strong. Like, black has just no development, no king safety. Whereas then, in that position, I'm going to castle. My king's going to be fine there. My rook's going to be great. So, okay, he goes rook takes g4. Is this just... This has to be just blundering checkmate. What do we got here? Takes here. Check. Come on, where is it? Okay, wait. I can just take like this, yeah? And check over here. And then I can take the queen. Gambit glasses, baby. Gambit glasses. Yes. There we go. There we go. I like that. That was a fun... It, it, it still even calls it a black mardemer, but that's not a black mardemer. We, 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 we really got him there. The Von Popiel strikes again. You hear it here first. <laughs> um, Alright. No longer need these for the moment, but they'll come back. So, we have our Von Popiel Gambit, which you can pretty much play against anything. It's like a universal repertoire, because if there's d d5, then we can play e4. 
gambit that pawn and you know they're playing here knight f6 and we get in bishop g5 like in the game bishop f5 overwhelmingly the most common move here it's not obvious what to do stockfish evaluation recedes the more it thinks but anyway bishop f5 is played here and now we play f3 takes of course and it's a mistake because queen takes f3 causes some problems here with a hit there and hit there so there's queen c8 there's bishop c8 and there's just e6 uh, in, in, in this game, queen c8, which is, I, I believe, Stockfish's favorite move. Uh, but just bishop c4. We're just going to keep developing. And now black faces the classic question in the Von Popiel about how to develop. Because you can't play knight d7 because the bishop just hangs. Because you're blocking your queen. And so e6 is like the only way to bring stuff out. But then we just take it and g4. And so then this pawn's hanging, which is already getting my pawn back. And you still have no development and no king safety. Takes and just d5. D5. The gambit glasses told me to do it. <laughs> because if we just, I mean, we could, I could just take f6. But the thing is, rook g8, I think white here is still doing very well. But I think rook g8, and then, you know, black's going to be able to develop here or develop here. And then, you know, I think that kind of just hits my queen and, and I lose the attack a little bit. But d5 really keeps a lot of the pressure on them. Uh, it's not even letting me turn on the lines there. Bishop to b4 is a blunder, but that's is what I'm saying. Like, what do you do if not bishop to b4 in this position if you're black? So, like, you want to guard f6, but you can't do this because takes. This is a disaster. Rook c1. Bishop's going to move. Knight comes in. Knight and rook unite, hitting c7. Although this is maybe a mistake, but uh, so bishop e7 was the other option, but queen e2 is a good move. Hitting that bishop comes back. And then I just take it. Rook comes in, knight comes in, everything's going well here. And so in the game, my opponent just lost very quickly because takes, and this pawn's just a complete menace. This is a menace because bishop takes, eating everything. I guess my opponent should have done this, but but it's completely losing. And rook takes g4 in the game, but boy, it just loses here. I take it. King here was the only other option, but this is check and mate. So king f8, queen h8 check, and my opponent resigns because I'm taking there. I'm probably going to upload that to YouTube because that was a pretty nice game. Pretty nice use of the gambit glasses, so make sure to like and subscribe. It's always funny when I say that on Twitch because now I have to continue the stream. <laughs> Do it anyway, though. This has been a gambit glasses victory. Subscribe.